customizing your editor also explaining render modes. Now since I recently reset this to default, I'm going to start destroy with a few minor adjustments. I'm going to do myself. Now you can actually change the color of the green. If you go to if you go to file preferences and then from skins, custom colors. And from here you can change the colors of the grid. And I've kind of got more used to using a darker background color, which can be found from view control colors. And this is your background color. And also change changing your grid from here. You have the accent lines, which are the smaller divisions. The center lines, these are the main lines that you should pay attention to. And the grid axis letter, these ones here. And those are the normal lines. Pimped out my editor, check it out. There are many other ways you can configure how your editor works. So for example the various rendering modes from previous tutorials. You may know that the most frequently used ones were NumPad 1, quarter view mode, NumPad 9, full screen mode with editor models enabled, and NumPad 6 that has this is pretty much game render mode. Now there are quite a few, many more ways to render stuff, and all of them are accessed via the drop panel of each view window. Now we have the first one is how the is rendered, job, button, perspective, and so on. The other, uh, well, this thing, the other one selects is your how selection is displayed. You have selection view, selection, and selection and ranges. The first one, selection, is simple enough. When you select something, you get it highlighted in blue and with a yellowish box around it. You can turn on the select yellowish box. And the shortcut for this is also Z. You can turn off the blue effect if you want. Now selection and ranges. This applies to things that have some sort of radius of effect. For example, if I add a fast light. This is pretty much just a standard light that's not being rendered. Okay, uh, Omni light. You, you can say that it has this very small radius of effect. And I can display this if I go to selection ranges. Display does this yellow sphere around it. Now the other one, exposure, I will talk about this later. The settings, these are a few other things that I'm also going to mention in a while. And the last one, rendering, this is pretty much the most important one, as it controls how different things are displayed. For example, if I go to NumPad 1, you will notice that a lot of these things are disabled, and NumPad 6, they are enabled. And you can customize the NumPad keys, which are pretty much just snapshots and quick ways to switch between these. For example, if I wanted to make NumPad 5, for example, disable my background, camera effects, you can hold down Shift to make the selection checkbox lists remain every time you make a selective change. Into fast light flares, fog, turn off haze, turn off this effect, image processing, turn off mirrors, and tone mapping. And I can also enable custom lightning. And if I wanted to save this setting so that every time I press NumPad 5, I'm going to get my setup. I can I hold down control and press numpad 5 and it will tell me that the view configuration 5 has been saved. And anytime I press 5, I can switch to it. And something I suggest you guys do, if you want, you can append selection ranges to numpad 6. So every time you since I often end up turning this on, might as well have it on all the time. A few other things can be accessed from rendering, render modes. And these are useful in larger maps. You have ambient occlusion, fast lights, 
light mouse scale, full bright, last frame low, and other ways to display data on your level. This map doesn't, doesn't have a lot of them, so let's switch to a map that has a better way to display how to use the rendering and also how to use quick draw. Okay, Cryo City, which I conveniently had loaded, and it's acting up as if it's going to crash any moment, so let's make this as quick as possible. If it hasn't crashed already. Wait, crashed? Wait, what? No. Uh, hold on, bear with me. Alright, more or less. There we go. We made it! Okay, so, rendering modes. We can display, for example, none, which <laughs> won't render anything. I don't know why Cody mad at that one. We can display ambient occlusion, and this is everywhere, and this is pretty much a view of the on screen or screen space ambient occlusion pass. If you want to view it for some reason, you can display your light maps or fast lights, but since this map doesn't use those, you won't see anything. Light map size this is more or less a display of well, relevant size of the pre baked shadows. The light maps shows the pre back shadows. I'm not moving my camera around because every time I do that, I risk that the editor will crash. Just trying to get a good view, Paul. Also, light map display also shows normal maps, as you can see. It's also a good way to see that, which models are using any normal maps. You can also view full byte. This is simple enough. Disable so shadowing. Lights per model. How many fast lights or dynamic shadows or lights are applied to a model. Shader per model. How many shader type effects a single model has. And stuff like that. Surface size or overdraw. I don't know the. I question the usefulness of this. But it would be kind of cool with some if used online. Wireframe mode renders the wireframe and shaded is just well useless again. I don't know. Let's go back to normal. Now one of the very more useful things you can do is enable or force something called quick draw. And what quick draw does is pretty much every time your editor starts starts to really lag, it it lowers dynamically disables and lowers the resolution of things. Let's force, let's enable it. And since it detected that my frame rate is below 15, it, automatic, it automatically enables quick draw when I move. And when I stop moving, it enables it again. So this is kind of really useful if you have a slow PC, like me, and want to navigate a large and complex map while still having a lot of your stuff, a lot of rendering stuff enabled. You can also force quick draw, and this means that every time that it won't actually turn on, turn off every time you stop moving. This means that it is enabled all the time, instead of turning on smartly like it does when it's not forced. You can also configure how or when it triggers, for example, trigger frames per second. If your frame rate is low, lower than this, it's going to enable. And the restore time, how much seconds it waits, how much seconds it waits after, well, after the frame rate goes above the, the specified here. You have modifiers, and this pretty much means what it's disabling. Disable dynamic shadows. If this is on, it means that dynamic shadows will be enabled, and if it's turned off, it means that they will be disabled mirrors and pixel ratio. This is pretty much like lowering your resolution and then searching the image back up. So if I use a really slow pixel ratio, like 0 0.1, and force it to display it, I'm going to get this. And if I use a larger ratio, like 5, 
I'm going to get a slightly more fident image. Usually not a default setting, so okay. I'm just not mentioning those in case your PC is slower than mine. You can add a few more modifiers if you really want to, but the most default ones are okay. For the render mode, you can change the rendering mode every time quick draw is enabled, but that's pretty much a bit useless. Okay. You can also display your the navigation grid, but I'll get more into this in later tutorials. The final thing I want to mention is the exposure rate. Now this pretty much is like a brightening and darkening of your editor view. This doesn't affect gameplay in any way and it's not accessible via no normally, but the editor has this option for when you're making for when you're working for example on a really dark map. I mean, for example I have a very night and dark and spooky map loaded and I can't really see anything. So if I use so in this case I can use the exposure to adjust the well brightness. Usually by default you you have auto exposure enabled but this doesn't seem to ever work so you have to turn this on just to turn this off and then lower your exposure rate. And now you can see perfectly well what's going on in your map. If you have a really bright map, you can even go higher. But, for example, in Cairo... Wait for it. Wait for it. For example, in Cairo, I could, if I turn... if I can turn, o turn up my exposure rate, if it's too bright for me. Although, I have yet to see a map that's so bright that I can't normally work on it. And these aren't just... and these aren't really limited. If I go to zero, I can go down to negative 2.50, and I can keep going down if I want more, and more, and more, and even more. And if I am true fire gone, I can use the reset to defaults. And this is pretty much everything I want to go to go over this show. Also, I should mention the exposure rate. This is not. This is also visible when playtesting. So if I leave it to negative 2.50 and enter my playtest mode, wait, wait, wrong playtest mode. If I enter playtest mode like this the exposure rate is saved. So keep in mind to turn this off when entering playtest mode. And even if you forget, don't worry about it. The final product, your final map, won't actually have this setting used when being played through the game. I hope you picked up something from this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next ones.